Welcome to the Alpe Apuana, Italy. On my first trip to Italy in May 2008, I saw the steep triangle peak of Pania della Croce from the Tuscan hills of Volterra and I knew. Then that winter, snow covered, I dreamed. Earlier this year, in May, on my 20th trip to Volterra, while riding my bike up the steep road of Santa Margarita, I look at the view of the peaks in a new way and I decide. Not just because only a few days before, my fourth trip to the Alps is cancelled because of bad weather and a train worker's strike, but because it is something new and so very close by. On the last day in Volterra, before the long flights back to California, I open my Tuscany hiking book and I read again the chapters on the Alpi Apuana, but this time I read closely, taking detailed notes. Upon arriving home, I begin serious research and most of all create the detailed topographic map, the most important key to allow entrance into the wilderness. We begin in Volterra, the Etruscan hill town with views down the valley to Pisa and the Alpe Apuana in the distance. I buy my bus and train tickets in town, then pack my gear at the farm in San Tripiano. Saturday, I get the 5.30 a.m. bus to Ponta Dera train station. Next is the 7.05 train to Pietra Santa, passing Pisa, Via Reggio, and other towns along the coast, arriving at 8.05. I get the wrong bus into the mountains that only goes to Ponte Stasemese, so I have to walk another 5 kilometers on the steep road to Stasema before the trail begins to Refugio Forte de Marme. After an hour, I pass the spring for water, the refugio, and find a great camp spot in the forest on the edge of a huge cliff above the refugio with spectacular views of the Procinto Tower and the giant sheer wall of Monte Nona.
Sunday, I'm up early to pack and climb the bolted and chained route of La Ferrata del Procinto, stashing the pack below the climb in the thick forest. After, I'll descend to the spring near the refugio and refill my five liters of water, then hike up to the pass Cayare Matana at the base of Monte Nona and Monte Matana. I should have enough water for a camp on one of the summits, then the next day descend to find the next water source.
Guarda, guarda come va. Ah, no, sì. Ah, c'è anche la telecamera. C'è anche la telecamera. Eh, sono super... Ah, ma il signore è quello davanti. Ah, bene in forno. From the pass, I see the Garfagnana Valley and the Albergo Alta Matana, just a short walk below. Reaching the false summit, I find it's perfect for camp, with room for two tents and plenty of rocks nearby to help secure it from the wild wind. The next section is only five minutes along the narrow rocky ridge to the summit. It's 12 o'clock.
Salut, da, Gigi! Ciao, da Christopher! Ciao! E Christopher, abbiamo incontrato qui sulle montagne! Monday morning coffee, then half pack and have oatmeal. Complete the packing, then up to the summit for sunrise at 7.05. over the top on the narrow ridge trail along the sheer cliff. The trail mostly fades in the grass and I study the folded grass marked by other boots passing by. I check my map twice as I search for the best path, trusting my instincts, and soon reach the forest and a few cairns, then see a blue paint marker on a rock. I find trail number 109 and turn left soon arriving at the stone sanctuary hut and trail marker of the pass, Foche de la Porquete, at 8.15. I left fork on trail number six, down towards Procinto and Fonte de Moscoso, below the walls of Monte Nona with big shoots of talus and boulders tearing down from above. I hear water flowing below. 
Soon after, at 8.30, I reach a fork and trust the water I heard, so I skip more backtracking and the fork left to Fonte di Moscoso, and I fork right towards my goal of the pass, Foce de Pietrasciana and Monte Forato. In just a few turns at 8.40, I hear water and scramble 50 feet below the trail to where water first begins to cascade from the broken blocks, and I mark the map. The trail passes many fallen trees, zigzagging up the steep hillsides reaching the pass, Foce de Prietrasciana, at 10.05. It's a four-way fork, and I take trail number 110, towards the bolted and chained route Ferrata Salvatore up the Monte Ferrato Ridge. At 10.50 I reach the base of the Ferrata. It's a steep, nearly vertical, exposed and broken extreme class 3 climb. The very start is the worst part I can see. It looks beyond my level, at least with this big pack, but I'll give it a try and find that red line. I don't complete the Ferrata and I am relieved reaching the ground but at least I found that red line, that edge of experience and danger where fear keeps you thinking correctly and the skill helps to know where and when to stop, as there is always next time. I hike slowly on the trail towards Paso del Arco. Arriving at the space below the arch, there's a perfect sandy spot for camp, and I see the trail sign, EE -E, number 12, for Cardoso, descending steeply down below the arch. I continue up the steep ridge to reach the next summit with the big cross, Monte Ferrato, and it has two summits separated by the enormous arch. It's 12.30 when I drop the pack on the sharp rocks of the summit. Back down to the shade of the arch, I rest, snack, and study the map, still wondering about this descent trail number 12, marked EE, -E, Excursionisi Esperti, and I wonder. It looks steep, but it's not a dotted line on the map, it's solid like the others. At 5.15, a runner arrives from below on this trail number 12, stopping at the sandy spot at the pass by me. I ask him about the trail and if it's safe. He says it's no problem. A regular trail just really steep. Then he turns as it's getting cold and he descends down the way he came below the arch and into the forest towards Cardoso, clearly visible 2,000 feet below. 
I'm relieved now and secure for my morning descent. I'm woken at 4 a.m. by the sounds of dogs howling from farms in the eastern valley. I hope they aren't the wild wolves that have been returned to the wild this past year. At 5.40 by headlamp, I begin down the steep trail below the arch into rough switchbacks and thick dark forests below stars. It's an amazing rough trail below big walls like a Sierra backcountry route as I hold trees or grip a rock when needed as the trail twists and slides very steeply down thick forest in total darkness.
I reach the village of Cardoso in two hours. The 8.32 bus arrives and I buy a ticket from the driver and we continue on down the twisting valley passing marble cutting factories towards the coast. Two trains, another bus, and I'm back in Volterra, unpacking and cleaning gear in the sun on the farm. In just a few days, it's another two trains and a weekend in Rome before returning home to California.